Rayclast. Welcome back, my tiny audience. I am sorry that it's been so long since I've uploaded anything, for those of you who care. But uh, didn't end up coming up with any ideas I really liked for anything after the Offering Stacker last league. And just still haven't really had a whole lot of motivation for making videos and stuff since my divorce. Uh, life has been kind of rough. But I am excited for Necropolis. Been planning on playing that since the announcement. I thought it looked cool enough that it would bring me back. Uh, last week or so I've been playing quite a lot of Dragon's Dogma 2 since that came out. That game ended up being pretty sick and I'm still going to be playing some more of that. But I thought I would just do a quick rundown of what my plans for the league start are for Necropolis here. So, I really like the look of the new Transfigured or Tornado Gem. Can't remember what it's called. Tornado of Elemental something. I don't know. I think it looks pretty cool, and that's what I'm planning on starting with, and I'm going to do it as an Elementalist. Uh, I'm going to use Combat Focus so that it can only pick Cold, because it is a Prismatic Gem, and just abuse some Hatred Scaling, because Hatred Scaling and Fist to Cold is really strong as it has been. Didn't get any nerfs on that front this league, and I just think it looks like it'll be a pretty cool new skill. Don't think it'll be any kind of DPS monster or anything, but it should have really good DPS uptime and just be a fun skill to play. So, I'm going to be going crit. This is what the like end game sort of tree will look like. Um, going to use Sandstorm Visage from Sanctum when that becomes available because the Tornado only has 5 base crit and pretty much anything with only 5 base crit is an excellent candidate for using Sandstorm Visage because you can get a ton of extra crit that way. Uh, going to be going Eldritch Battery, doing sort of standard stuff you've probably seen on some of my Elementalist builds before including the Offering Stacker where we're scaling cold damage but you go Shaper of Storms. That makes it so all of your damage can shock and also makes it worthwhile to pick up some of these nice little lightning clusters for more shock effect and damage. One nice thing about the uh, tornado is it has all three elemental jet tags, so it uh, counts as a lightning gem, so you can do this 12 crit multi with lightning skills, those work. And of course the 100% increased crit chance against shocked enemies work uh, because it is a lightning skill, so those will still apply to it even though it'll only be doing cold damage. Grabbing aura and curse stuff. Going down here, early on I will probably go in for this spell suppression in addition to Inveterate. Eventually with gear I'll be able to cap spell suppression just with the Inveterate wheel here. And I uh, won't need these anymore. So that's the long term plan there. Going to the rest of this crit stuff, aura stuff. <coughs> ah, excuse me. And uh, pretty basic, I don't know, we're going to have cap spell suppression, we should be able to hit pretty high evasion numbers because we get decent amount of R effect when we're using grace plus flask and stuff. I don't have like any gear on here. I don't usually fully POB stuff out when I'm planning. I basically just do a passive tree and figure out mana reservation. That's why I've got Dragon Fang's Flight in here. Going to be using quite a lot of reservation stuff on this character. Uh, with the Dragon Fang's Flight and what I get on the tree, which is going to be Anointing Sovereignty over here, Makes it so I'll only need a level 3 Enlighten, which is nice because level 4 Enlighten is like monstrously expensive. So we're going to be using that Enlighten with 250% in Hatred and Grace, as well as a 25% in Herald of Ice. And then I'm also going to be using Herald of Purity and Defiance Banner. And then I don't have it here, but I'll also be using Divine Blessing with Haste. So we're going to have two Purities, a Banner, and three 50% Auras on us all the time. Um... I would guess I'll probably be like over 40k evasion or something. So I have a pretty good evasion pool, cap spell suppression. Going to probably just use a rare body armor. Lightning coil would definitely be an option. But uh, I think I want the general aura scaling that you can get from Eldritch Implicits on a body armor. So I'm probably going to go that route as well as the spell suppression. If I was going to use lightning coil, I think I would have to go in and get these nodes. Because... Uh, you'd just be missing too much without 20 plus percent that you can get from body armor. But I'll probably aim to do the little double fizz taken as craft on body armor, and then I'm going to use a t taste of hate for some fizz taken as. And then, like, real expensive later optimization would be nice to get a uh, corrupt on a sandstorm visage with fizz taken as fire. I believe that's a Valor implicit on helmets. 
And uh, yeah, overall it's just going to be a typical evasion suppression character with a little bit of Fizz taken as Ellie, which I think that's generally like the uh, cheapest, easiest way to get a character that survives pretty well in almost all content realistically. I think get these right side characters where you just do evasion spell suppression and some Fizz taken as... It's like the least number of layers you can use and still have a character that really feels good and doesn't die much. I feel like it's way cheaper and easier than doing like max res and armor conversion stacking on the left side of the tree. So I definitely think it's a great starting option to just do one of these evasion suppression characters. I've got the couple of combat focuses here. Um, in case you didn't know, if you're planning on starting Tornado or something, something I figured out reading around as I was trying to figure out how to play in this build is that the wording on these combat focus jewels is somewhat confusing, uh, but to make it more specific, they would have to make like really long descriptions on them. It says, for example, this one that makes it so it cannot choose fire, it says with 40 total int and dex in radius, prismatic skills cannot choose fire. When I initially read that, what it says to me is that you need 40 int and 40 dex in the radius, but that's not actually the case you need 40 total int or dex, meaning the int and dex have to add to at least 40, and that can be 40 int and zero dex. So like here there's zero dex, but it'll work because there's 40 int. Same over here with the one that makes it so it won't pick lightning. 40 total dex and strength means dex slash strength needs to add to 40 total so i don't actually think there's any strength in here but there is 40 dex so that works for that so you don't actually have to go mega far out of your way like you used to have to with combat focus when it did indeed require some combo of both attributes uh previously like almost always had to path into the scion area if you wanted to do combat focus jewels because of the way attributes are stacked in there but currently you don't so the plan is uh, starting Freeze Pulse Frost Bomb, and then probably going to go into Ice Spear. That's going to be a little painful through the campaign, I think, in terms of clearing, because obviously Ice Spear clear is kind of garbo. Um, but I'll get through it. The plan is to get to Merciless Lab, and then just farm Merciless Lab repeatedly until I get the Trans Tornado, and I'll just be bringing Green Gems in with me all the time to uh <clears throat> to transfigure and sell uh until i can get the one i want and then i'll just be going tornado right from there i'll probably use increased critical strikes chance and still go crit with it since i'm going to be going by crit stuff on the tree ellie overload is obviously going to be a really good option with that skill early on because it's going to hit many times for you um but like i said since i'm going to be going pretty nodes anyways i think it'll make sense to just use the increased crit strikes gem and uh won't have amazing crit for a while but it'll be enough to work i think hopefully uh other supplemental things i don't have in here but i've uh, been thinking about i'm gonna be using like a uh cold snap bone chill unbound ailments i should be getting to 50 percent shock and that'll get me to 50 percent chill with bone chill so that'll be 50 percent plus 30 percent plus 10 percent from a nerve on gloves i'll have net enemies taking 90 percent increased damage so i think with all that together the tornadoes should do decent enough damage and the fact that they should have like pretty much full damage uptime i think is going to end up making this a really well-rounded sort of character so I'm excited to play the league. I think the Necropolis stuff looks pretty cool. I'm planning on specking into the lower right cluster on the Atlas tree for Necropolis right off the bat. That's the one that gives monsters unresolved anguish, which is what you need for crafting. Uh, and basically going to try and hope that the uh, Necropolis crafting is good enough that I can use that in place of like essence or harvest or rog to get my early game rares together and maybe craft some stuff for profit as well and i'm going to be going delve again i've gone delve the last couple leagues and i just really like delve so i'm going to be going delve again and i'm going to be doing some sort of scarab farming strategy as well on the atlas i think the scarabs look really cool so i'm excited to see how the end game plays out hopefully i'll see some of you in ray class send a message if you're there uh, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them about anything PoE related. So thanks for watching. See you guys later.